hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a labyrinth game. Well, these things have been around forever, it seems. For as long as I can remember, these things have existed. I always wanted one as a kid, but never got one. Uh, if you're wondering what they look like, it looks like this. And I think due to technology and that sort of thing, uh, these sort of things have disappeared. They are no longer uh, the item to have. Now, if you can't do this with it, it's useless to children these days. But it's time to bring it back with today's project. And it all starts off with some half inch thick material. Well, how I'm going to start off this project is with some half inch plywood. I have four pieces here. They are three and a half inches wide and they're about 13 and a half inches long. Um, these will make up the main box or the main frame for our labyrinth game. So the first thing we want to do on the inside edge of each piece, one quarter of an inch up from the bottom, we want to place a quarter inch wide, quarter inch deep dado. Now you can do this however you wish. You can use dado blades, you can use your router table, you can use your table saw uh, and just you know make several passes. However you do it is up to you, but you need to get a quarter inch wide, quarter inch deep dado all the way across the bottom of all four pieces. With that done, we will now use our cross cut sled. We will tilt our blade to 45 degrees and we will miter our corners or our ends of these uh, three and a half inch wide pieces so that at their longest point, from tip to tip, they are 13 inches long. Uh, the best way to do this is cut one side and then place a stop block on your fence in order to make it so that they're all identical. We need to end up with a 13 inch square. Well, to complete the pieces for our box frame of this, I have a quarter inch thick piece of MDF that is 12 and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. We now need to label our pieces A, B, C, and D. And once we get all of those labeled, we can now start to drill a few holes in our piece. Now piece A will get in the bottom right hand corner here a through 5 8 diameter hole. And now the last hole you want to drill in this piece A will be a quarter inch diameter through hole. It'll be centered on our 13 inch side so that'll be at six and a half inches and as well it will be two inches up from our bottom edge. So you can just measure up here at two inches and there will be our mark right there. So we will drill that quarter inch through hole. With the holes drilled in piece A, we will now take the opposite side, which is piece C, and we will drill a quarter inch hole. Same dimensions as this, centered on our 13 inch length and two inches up from the bottom. However, it will only be a quarter of an inch deep, starting from the inside. So drill your hole quarter of an inch deep. All right, just like that. And that's all the holes on parts A and C. We will now turn our attention to parts B and D. And the first thing that we want to drill is a quarter inch through hole. It will be inside B here. We are going to do it again, centered on our 13 inch side. And as well, it will be one and a half inches up from the bottom. And using those same dimensions centered on our 13 inch side and an inch and a half from the bottom on the inside surface, we will drill a quarter inch diameter hole, but it will only be a quarter of an inch deep. Now there's one more hole to drill in each of these pieces, pieces B and D, and it will still be on that center line, but it will be three inches up from the bottom. And that will be, again, a quarter inch diameter hole that will be one quarter of an inch deep. 
All right, and at this point in time, we can glue our main base box together, making sure that we pay attention, not like I'm doing here, to where our labels go, A, B, C, and D. So we will glue this together, remembering to place our bottom or our MDF base in our quarter inch dados at the bottom. And once you get those clamps on there securely and you're happy with the way everything lines up, just do your best to clean up the squeeze out that's on the inside there. Well, while we're waiting for this to dry up, we can put it aside and start working on the first inner frame of our labyrinth. And what I've got for that are four pieces of pine. They are three eighths of an inch thick. They are one inch wide and they have been mitered on both ends so that their total length is 11 and three quarters of an inch. But just like we did with our outer frame, we need to drill some holes first. So pick two boards that are opposite each other. We'll pick this top and bottom one here. You want to drill a quarter inch through hole centered both on the length and on the height here. So it'll be half an inch in and then centered on its length. Now the next two holes that you want to drill will be in these opposite pieces. They will be drilled on the inside surface. They will also be a quarter of an inch diameter. They will also be centered length and width. However, they will only be a quarter of an inch deep into this material. You don't want it to be a through hole. So only a quarter of an inch deep on the inside surface of each of the remaining pieces. All right, and with that done, those holes drilled quarter of an inch deep, we can put this frame together using a frame clamp and glue it all up, making sure that your through holes are opposite each other and your stopped holes are opposite each other. So I'm going to get this all glued up. The other thing you want to do is before things have a chance to set, you want to check this thing for square to make sure that it is in fact square all the way around. And we can move on next by making the inner frame for this frame. Well, for the inner frame of our labyrinth, it is basically the same process. We have three eighths of an inch thick pine. It is one inch wide and we have mitered our corners so that our length at its longest point from tip to tip is 10 and three quarters. Again, we have a couple of holes to drill and this time I do mean a couple. So pick two sides that are opposite each other and centered on both the length and the width we will drill a through quarter inch hole in those two pieces. So with those two holes drilled, we can glue this together using our frame clamp the same way we did with our other frames. Uh, we just need to make sure of two things. One, that our holes are opposite each other, and two, that once we get it clamped up that the whole assembly is square. Now what I have is some quarter inch by quarter inch pieces of pine and uh, they are cut to the length to fit inside our box frame here. So I'm just going to apply glue to one edge of each piece and we can glue these in place. This will be the supports for our maze once we build that. So we can glue all of these in place and let them completely cure. Well, the next pieces that we need are going to be some of these little tiny eye bolts. And what we're going to do is in the bottom of each one of our frames here, not our main box, but our frames, opposite to our through holes. So here we have our stopped holes. This is where we want our eye bolts. So we're just going to, in the middle here, roughly centered over our stopped holes, we're going to drill a pilot hole here. I'm just using a little pin vise to do this because these things are so small. And we can screw these little eye bolts into the bottom of our frame. We need one on each side where there is a stopped hole. Now on our smaller frame where there are no stopped holes, there is only through holes, 
um, those ones will just be installed on our solid sides that have no holes as opposed to um, the through hole side. And then we can do the exact same thing on our smaller frame. Well, it's now time to start our assembly. I have our main base box clamped down to the bench. This hole right here at the top, it will be on sides B and D. The top hole that we only drilled part way through, that will get aligned with our through holes on our larger interior frame. And what we want to do is you want to sand a little piece of quarter inch dowel so that it's a little less on the end than one quarter. We need it loosely fitting in those stopped holes. And once you're happy with how loose they fit in those holes, we're going to insert our little pieces of quarter inch dowel through our inner frame and into those stopped holes. Now you want to make sure that after you get them installed that this frame still tilts freely. You don't want this to be tight. If it's tight, you need to sand your dowels a little more so they fit loose into those holes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to back these dowels off. I'm going to apply wood glue here and then spin it as we put it in to that stopped hole and have it so that it sits in place and it is glued into this bigger frame here. Once we're happy with how that is sitting in there, we'll let both pins completely cure before we do anything else. You also want to make sure that your eye bolts are underneath here. They have to be on the bottom. All right, and once the glue on those two dowels have cured, we'll use a flush cut saw here and we will cut our dowels flush with our larger frame. Okay, and now we can install our second frame in here. And it's the exact same process. Uh, all we need to do is take our inner frame, making sure that our eye bolts are at the bottom, and sand our pieces of dowel. I've pre-sanded these, and we'll put them through our holes here and into the stopped holes. One there and one there. And we will just test this to make sure that now this is turning freely and it is that's great and we'll glue it in the same process we'll back these out just a little bit apply some glue and spin them into place cleaning up our squeeze out and letting them completely cure and once those are dry we'll just flush cut them and sand them completely flush to our frame as well well the next thing you're going to need is some quarter inch dowel and we will slide it in through the holes in our outer casing, uh, through the through hole, and right into the stopped hole on the opposite side. At this point now, we can reach inside and we want to mark where it connects with our box frame here. And as well, about one inch, we'll say, from the edge of the box, we'll place another mark. And that's where we can cut our dowel off right there. And once you get that cut off, we can do the exact same thing with our other holes that we drilled here in our case. So what I have done is on both of our dowels, right at the line that we drew there that marks the edge of our casing, I've drilled a 1 16th diameter through hole. You can see there that it's right at the edge of that line. And I will reinsert our dowels and what I'm going to do once they're inserted is I'm going to place a little small cotter pin through both of those holes and that will keep our dowels held in place so that they don't pull out. Now if you don't have cotter pins you can just use a little fine finishing nail and bend it over. That would work just as well. 
for the knobs of this labyrinth game, all I've done is I've taken some scrap three quarter inch walnut, I've used a two and a quarter inch hole saw, and I've cut out these knobs and then sanded them so that they're kind of a little rounded just to make them a little better looking. And what we're going to do is on each one of these dowels, I'm going to place a quarter inch flat washer. This is a fender washer here. And then we're going to glue our knobs right here loosely onto our quarter inch dowels and let them cure. Once they're done, we'll flush cut this dowel off and sand it so that it's completely flush. And that'll give us our turning mechanisms for our platforms. Well, on this show, whenever I make a mistake, I own it and uh, I want to share it with you here. Those eye bolts that I placed in the middle, they are interfering here with my control dowels. And although it's fine on this one side where the dowel is much lower, um, it is not fine for this one, which the eye bolts hit the dowel and prevent me from getting much action on that tilt. So I'm going to remove those eye bolts and shift them over to just outside of where this dowel is to give me a little bit more of a pivot action. Well, with that fixed up now, you can see we have a lot more action on that direction. I'm a lot happier with that. So that's good. I'm glad I caught that. Um, what we need now is a couple of these little springs. This will be for our tension of our mechanisms. So what I'm going to do is in each side, just on one side, so I've already done it here, but now on this side on the eye bolt, I'm going to open that eye bolt up just slightly and hook our spring onto the eye bolt and then close it back up. This is what will keep the tension on our cables, we'll call them. But uh, if you don't have springs like this, don't worry, don't fret. You can steal springs out of a, an old click pen and that will work just as well. So let me get this spring attached and uh, we can move on from there. What I have here is a little piece of string. What you're going to do or what you're going to want to do is place the string through one of your eye bolts, the, the one that does not have the, the spring on it. And once you get it through the eye bolt, tie it tightly to the eye bolt. Okay, and then we'll just cut off the excess here just so it's not drooping all over the place. And what you're going to want to do now is stretch it so it goes just a little bit beyond the board and cut it off. All right, so at this point now, this string will go around the dowel that is running perpendicular to it. And you will wrap it around this dowel three times. There's two and there's three. You pull it a little bit taut and then get your spring, which is up underneath here. Put your string through the loop of the spring, just like this. Pull some tension on your string and then tie it off. And now, like I said, that spring that's on there is meant to keep the tension. And once you're happy that you've got that tied off the way you want, this now This knob, there you go, you can see that it controls this mechanism. So if you're happy with the way that's set up and you're happy with the way it's working and running, then you can do the exact same thing with your other dowel. And now at this point, you should be able to control both your left right tilt as well as your back and forth tilt. Isn't that cool? All right, so there we go. There's our mechanisms are now working. So this is pretty much the labyrinth game itself done. Um, what we need to do now though, is we need to make the maze. 
For the base of our maze, I have a half inch thick piece of plywood here and I have cut it to be 10 inches by 10 inches. That will fit inside our uh, smaller frame of our labyrinth game. Now, here's the thing. Um, I can't really tell you how to make your maze. It's up to you how you want to make it. Um, so what I'm going to do is off camera, because I think it would be excruciatingly boring, uh, I'm going to use some quarter inch by quarter inch pine pieces, and I'm going to construct a maze here. And throughout the maze, I'm going to be drilling some 5 8 diameter through holes as traps for our marbles or our ball bearings that we'll be using for this game. So I'm going to get that done, and when I'm finished, I'll show you what I come up with. So design your maze however you like at this point. And when it's all said and done, you end up with something like this, um, with the maze and the traps all the way through. So at this point in time now, you can take your main frame and you just want to sit your maze into your labyrinth frame. This will not get glued in. The reason we don't glue this in is because at some point in time you may need to do some maintenance on this. A spring might give out, a string might break, what have you. It, you may need to get back on the inside and it would be much easier to just pull that top off of there than it would be um, to have to take the whole thing apart. So you can see here now that the whole maze will tilt in the different directions and at this point now you just need a marble or in my case a stainless steel ball bearing. And the whole point of this game is to be able to turn these knobs to get that marble to roll and you want to end up from point A over here to point B in this bottom corner. Sounds easy but honestly this is harder than it looks. Um, I have never really been good at this, but it's one of those things that if you take your time, you'll... Okay, you know what? <laughs> no big deal. Uh, we'll try again. But guys, when it goes down to the bottom, how do you get it out? Well, that hole that you drilled right down here in this one corner, you'll just tilt that up and your marble comes rolling right out. But either way, there you go, guys. There is the Labyrinth game. This thing is awesome. And uh, what a fun toy to, uh, to present to your children and challenge them to get from point A to point B. And there you have it. A Labyrinth game. Guys, this project was an absolute blast. Just a load of fun. Um, I had a great time making it and you know what, you can bang one of these off in a weekend, maybe even less if you're not fumbling around with it like I was for a few of the things. Now I can't take full credit for this. Um, I actually got this idea from a magazine and it was from Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts, uh, Gadgets and Gizmos, or Gizmos and Gadgets I think it was called. Um, and that was published back, I believe, in 2016. I'm not sure if it's still available, but I'll try to post a link down below so that you guys can hopefully get your own magazine if you're interested in a hard copy of the pattern, say, for the maze. Now, I had to change my maze. This is not like the one in the magazine. Uh, the reason for that is that the magazine called for half-inch diameter ball bearings or marbles. Mine were 9 16 which, which meant that for me, everything had to increase. The holes had to increase the way that I moved around the maze. So everything had to change. I ran into quite a few problems with that, but I was able to overcome them and make this uh, game and have it successful. Guys, I got to tell you, this thing is amazing. It is absolutely wonderful. Um, so far, I love it. I know my wife was looking forward to playing around with it and uh, well you know what guys honestly give this thing a try it's a blast it's a lot of fun to play it's just as much fun to make and what a great way to spend some time with your kids on a rainy saturday afternoon or what have you make one of these
Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the content today. This one, like I said, was a lot of fun. It was mostly made of scrap for me. Scrap pine, it was scrap plywood. Um, I had the ball bearings, the springs, I had the cotter pins. These are things that I stock in my shop just for such a, an occasion like a crafty little project. I'm always looking for ways that I can use things like that and this thing just foot the bill. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have a lot of fun here every Tuesday and Friday, and I'm hoping that you're going to consider becoming a part of that. I hope that you've enjoyed today's content, guys. I hope that you're going to try this for yourself. And more importantly, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.